let's look at the testes. Let's go through this lecture to see the morphology of the testes. The testes is also referred to as the testicle. It is an over-shaped organ that is located inside the scrotum. This is the testes and this is the scrotal sac where the testis is located. If you look at the configuration of the testis in human, the left testis is usually lower than the right. The weight of the testis is about 25 gram and its length is about four centimeter and two centimeter in weight. The testis has a function under the reproductive system and it has another under the endocrine system. For the reproductive system, it helps in the reduction of sperm. Why under the endocrine system, it produces testosterone. So it has a function within the endocrine system and also the reproductive system. And as we go through with this lecture, we see how the testis is able to do this. First, why is the testis located outside of the body? It is suspended by a dual chamber sac that is called the scrotal sac. This scrotal sac also may be referred to as the scrotum is where the testis is embedded in. So it's able to house it conveniently. This structure called the testes is located outside of the body because of thermal regulation. So the process of spermatogenesis is one of the major functions of the testes cannot occur within the body. It can only occur under a temperature that is lower than that of the body. So it needs to be located outside of the body where this optimal temperature for spermatogenesis can be achieved. The major structure that is seen within the testes is the seminiferous tubules. These are tubular network that is seen to be arranged within the testes. But first, let's look at the tunica albugina. The tunica albugina is a fibrous sheet that tends to enclose the entire testes. And as it encloses it, it tries to drive in into the substance of the testes, thereby dividing it into lobos. So you have the tunica albugina, the region that is highlighted in black. And if you see this configuration, you see that they tend to drive in into the tissue of the testes. And as they do that, they divide the testes into wedge-shaped lobular structure that is called the testicular lobos. And these are the lobos. You see the lobos are arranged from one hand to the other. Then within the lobules, we have tubular configuration that is called the seminiferous tubules. So this is what you see. And within each lobules, aside from the seminiferous tubules, we also see the interstitial tissue. This is the interstitial tissue, the region that is dotted blue. We have the seminiferous tubules, which are tubular network, then embedded in a mesh of interstitial tissue. So let's drive a bit more in on the seminiferous tubules. We say they are called tubular network that is seen in each lobe of the testes. We have two major regions of the seminiferous tubules. We have a convoluted region, and this is the convoluted region. If you see this convolution at a point, they become straightened. Then you have the straightened region. The seminiferous tubules is seen to be more convoluted than being straight. This means that the convoluted region takes more of the part, while the straight region takes a lesser part of the, of the seminiferous tubules. Also to add that the convoluted part of the seminiferous tubules is where spermatogenesis occur, after which will be transported through the straight part of the seminiferous tubule, which means that the straight part is more of a passageway. The sperm that is produced within the convoluted region down to the straightened region, they will be emptied into this network of tubular presentation. And this area is called the retter testis. And this is the retter testis. The retter testis is like a continuation of the straight part of the seminiferous tubules. The activity is exhibited in the seminiferous tubules. This is the seminiferous tubules in this gross presentation. When this region is extracted, this section of the seminiferous tubules is what is presented in this image. The wall of the seminiferous tubules, we have two types of cells. And the first one is the spermatogenic cell, and this is the spermatogenic cell. This spermatogenic cell will further develop to become the spermatozoa. And as they develop, they are released into the lumen of the seminiferous tubules. And this is how they begin to transport themselves, that this tubular network. The next set of cell is the satellite cell. This is the satellite cell highlighted in green. This cell produces support or nutrients to the spermatogenic cell. So they tend to secrete fluids that nourishes or protects this cell. The third type of cell that is seen is not seen within the seminiferous tubules, but 
it is seen in the interstitial region. Remember when we talk about the lobus, we said in the lobus, we have the seminiferous tubules and also the interstitial tissue. So it is within the interstitial tissue that we have the lady cells and what they are responsible for is the secretion of testosterone. Remember when we talked about the function of the testes, we say that they have reproductive function and endocrine function. Reproductive function in the sense that they produce spermatozoa and endocrine function because they secrete testosterone. Right? testis. We've said that the rectal testis is formed after the straight part of the seminiferous tubules. We have the convoluted part, we have the straight part, after which we have a tubular network that's called the rectal testis. This rectal testis to pierce the tunica albuginea. We said that the tunica albuginea is a fibrous sheet or capsule that covers the testis, but they tend to drive in into the substance of the testes by dividing them into lobus. At this region, the rectal testes will pierce the tunica of the gena around the hilum or the mediastinum of the testes. So this region where there is exit or movement of structures out of the testes is called the hilum or the mediastinum. So they pierce the tunica albugina in this region so that they can empty their content into the efferent ductus. So this is the rectal testes. And after which the sperm will be emptied into the efferent ductus. So this is the efferent ductus. Then from the efferent ductus, they move to the epididymis. This is the region I lighted in red. From the epididymis, they go to the vast difference. The vast difference, we move through the inglina canal. The inglina canal is a tube that runs inferior medially, allowing structures to pass from the perineal region into the pelvic cavity or vice versa. So this structure will pass through this inguinal canal to enter into the pelvis. Then this two will then become the ejaculatory dot. From there, it will become the urethra. Then through the urethra, the substance that is contained within it will be emptied into the female reproductive system or emptied outside, it, as the case may be. So at the region of the rectal testes, the sperm cell within the rectal testes are said to be immobile from the seminiferous tubules to the rectal testes are immobile. When they are emptied into the efferent ductus, the wall of the efferent ductus is lined by a ciliated columnar epithelium. And this is for a reason. We know that ciliated epithelium helps in movement because the cilia will tend to flip forward and backward, thereby generating pressure that tends to push the content down the lumen of their lining. So we have a ciliated columnar epithelium in the efferent ductus. So as the substance is emptied into it, it pushes the sperm cell into the epididymis. So there is a form of external support for them to enhance their mobility. And this is the efferent ductus. The efferent ductus are parallel series of tubules that connect the rectal testes with the epididymis. This is the epididymis. In the epididymis, the sperm undergo maturation and and it tends to assume its motility within this region. When it is produced in the seminiferous tubules, running through the rectal testes and the efferent ductus, they need a form of support that will tend to assist in their motility. That is why the ciliated epithelium lining of the efferent ductus is seen to assist in this process. Also, some epithelium lining of the rectal testes are ciliated, and this also helps to contribute or support the motility of the sperm then we have the vast deference. Activity specifically exhibited in the rectal testes is that it helps to mix the sperm cell with the sperm fluid. We've said that the seminiferous tubules is made up of two types of cell. We have the spermatogenic cell, which is responsible for the production of spermatozoa. Then we have the cytolysis cell that secretes fluid that helps to nourish the sperm cell. So this fluid and the sperm cell is mixed in this region. So this helps to make the sperm cell and the sperm fluid together. And also in this region, there's reabsorption of fluid. When it mixes it, it tends to also help to reabsorb the fluid back into the body and thereby helping to concentrate the sperm.
blood supply. The blood supply of the testis is different from the scrotum that is covering it. Because of the developmental process, we know that the testis develop in the abdomen, and there's what we call the descent of the testis. It, it descends down, just to assume this space, because we already said that it needs to be located out of the body for thermal regulation. Therefore, the blood that supplies the testis is from the abdominal aorta. So as it grows, it tends to descend also with its blood supply. Like. So we have the testicular artery. These arteries originate from the abdominal aorta. Follow its descent out of the body, and that is why you have the testicular artery being a branch of the abdominal aorta. And this is the abdominal aorta, and this is the testicular artery that emerges from there, then travels down through the inguinal canal to supply the testes in the perineal region. Then we have other collateral blood supply that also help to support the testicular artery. We have the Christmasteric artery, which is a branch of the inferior epigastric artery, which branches from the external iliac artery. Remember that at the terminal end of the abdominal artery, there's a bifurcation into the common iliac artery. From the common iliac, there's further bifurcation into the external iliac and the internal iliac. The external iliac will go down to supply the limbs. The Christmasteric artery also passes through the inguinal canal. This is the inferior hypogastric artery that branches off from the external iliac. And we have the Christmasteric artery that branches off from the inferior epigastric artery. We also have another branch that originates from the internal iliac. We have the artery of the doctor's deference supplying the testes. This is the external iliac and this is the internal iliac artery. From the internal iliac artery, we have the superior vesical artery. And this is the superior vesical artery. It is from the superior vesical artery that we have a branch that is called the artery of the doctor's deference that also gives supply to the testes. And this is the artery of the doctor's difference. The artery of the doctor's difference also passes through the inguinal canal. So we have arterial branches from both the internal iliac artery and the external iliac artery, helping to support the testicular artery in supplying blood to the testes. Then the venous drainage. The venous drainage of the testes is very interesting. We have a network of about eight to 12 veins coming together to form an anastomotic network around the testicular artery. And this is called the pampiniform plexus of vein. And this is the pampiniform plexus of vein that is wrapped around the testicular artery. Present a countercurrent heat exchange effect. This is the testicular artery highlighted in red and you have the veins around it, wrapping around it, forming a form of network around the artery. So what happens is that the blood that is passing through the artery will be cooled. As this network is formed around it, you can see it's being transferred from this artery to this vein. So it's like enhancing a cooling effect of the testicular artery to further help to contribute to the cooling status that is needed within that region. So finally, the veins will also drain up and be emptied into the renal vein on the left side. Why on the right side, the testicular vein will drain directly into the inferior vena cover. You can see that the venous drainage is also the abdominal region, while the artery also comes from the abdominal region. Then talking about the lymphatic drainage, it's also the same with the lymphatic drainage. We have the testicular lymphatic vessel, and they also drain to the paraiotic lymph nodes, which is located around the abdominal aorta. Testicular cancer may spread to the abdominal region because the lymphatic drainage of this region is to the abdominal region. Then we have innervation. The innervation of the testes is by the testicular nerve plexus, and this is derived from the renal and the aortic plexus of nerve. So thanks for watching this video. Let's meet in our next lecture video.